At this point, typing the words Avatar The Way of Water is now in theaters is almost surreal. The sequel to one of the most profitable feature films of all time arrives after an unprecedented eight delays and well over a decade since the original 2009 hit. Stay tuned as we dive right into the world of the Navi and tell you all about the movie. First things first, a little about the movie's plot. Avatar The Way of Water, set more than 10 years after the events of Avatar, follows the Sully family as they explore a new part of Pandora. Jake Sully and Neytiri have raised a family and now lead their people. But when the humans return to Pandora and pose an even more dangerous threat than before, they may have to defy their instincts and flee. Neytiri and Jake seek refuge with the Met Kyena clan, but RDA may still pursue them even among a new group of Navi, with Neytiri and Jack Sully's children, Miles Spider Socorro, and an entirely new Navi clan. Avatar The Way of Water introduces the next generation of heroes on Pandora. Miles Spider Socorro is a human adolescent who was born and raised in Pandora. The first war between the Navi and humans orphaned him. Tuk Tire, Tuk, is Jake and Neytiri's youngest child. She's only eight years old, but she's wise and self-assured. Moving on, the actors revealed some details about their characters and the movie. Screen Rant spoke with Jack Champion and Trinity Jolie Bliss about their characters Spider and Tuk in Avatar The Way of Water. Bliss deconstructs the Sully family dynamic, while Champion shares Spider's thoughts on the return of humans. They also talked about the motion capture process and what family means to their characters. Trinity Jolie Bliss started off talking about her character, Tuk T Ray, saying that everyone calls her Tuk, being the youngest of Jake and Neytiri. She has a big heart, and she's super curious with the way she's always observing everything around her. Bliss described Tuk as the younger sibling that kind of wants everything to be okay in the family, which is why the family sticking together and protecting each other is a big part of this film. To Tuk, her family is the most important thing, and she'll do anything to protect them. Up next, Jack Champion spoke about his character as well. Jack Champion plays Spider, who's a human born and raised on Pandora, but the actor believes that at his core he feels conflicted, that even though he is human, he feels so much like he's a part of the Navi and the culture and the people. But obviously, at the end of the day, Spider is an alien, and to Jack Champion, it's really cool to play a character with such deep inner conflict. Spider is a human orphan product of the war and Champion spoke about how he might feel about the Sky People returning. The actor explained that at first he fully hates it and everything, but he thinks his view on things definitely changes a lot throughout the movie. Now let's talk about the Sully family dynamic and how Took fits in. Trinity Jolie Bliss listed the members of the Sully family, the brother from another mother, Kiri, Loak, and Netiem, and Jake and Neytiri. She explained how family is their fortress and how their greatest weakness is that they stick together. It can at times also be their greatest strength. Since Took is the youngest, everyone's really protective of her, and Bliss thinks she sees that as an underestimation, but she doesn't underestimate herself. So she compensates by being outgoing and tenacious, and she simply wants to show that she can do what the older kids do. Bliss explained that that was probably how Took fit into that family. Moving on, here's a little about what the filming process was like for Bliss and Champion. James Cameron is on the cutting edge of filmmaking, and this film is incredibly immersive, especially the free diving and underwater capture. Jack Champion talked about how he thinks it's cool that they did underwater performance capture for the first time, since it's never been done before. They had so much preparation going into it that, at the end, they all definitely felt comfortable and ready to take it on, even though it's a really big thing to do. Up next, Bliss and Champion talked a little bit more about what family meant to their characters. Trinity Jolie Bliss explained once again how family is a big part of this film, and especially the Sullys. As they are going through all of this, they have to ride and role with many ways of water by sticking together and protecting each other. Jack Champion believes that, at least for him, watching the film and simply being a part of it, experiencing the story, the heart in the story, and the family dynamic has made him realize how, when we're with the people we love, we just have to tell them that we love them and make the most of the time. Spider, according to Jack Champion, has always wanted a true family, which he believes he can find in the Sullys. But he also feels a little disconnected because he is not only human, but he may not be fully accepted by everyone. The actor added that with Courage, he's not sure, since the character feels very conflicted about what true family even means. Coming up, Bailey Bass and Jamie Flatters also gave us some insight into the characters they're playing. Bailey Bass plays Soraya, who's part of the Metkayina clan, the new clan introduced in Avatar The Way of Water. She's 
the daughter of Renal and Tonawari. Bass talked about how Soraya has a big heart, and she's very kind, and about how excited she is for the audiences to meet her. Bailey's character really takes a liking to Loak, the second son of the Soli family. The actress talked about what drew her character to him, explaining that it was more gradual, not instant for her. Soraya observes his perseverance throughout the film, as well as how quickly he learns the way of water, because that is what she is teaching him. Bass thinks that his rebellion is fascinating to her, too. As for Jamie Flatters, he plays Netiem, the eldest son of Jake and Neytiri from the first film. Flatters says he thinks the character is a pretty cool dude. When it comes to the Soli family dynamic, Netiem is the kid that tries to take on the highest moral virtue, which is rough terrain, especially given that the film is going to see the humans come back. The RDA are going to try and mess up the Navi, like always, and Netiem is going to try to take on the responsibility of a warrior, which is a very interesting story. Flatters called it a kind of pleasure to get to play a character arc like that. Moving on, the movie had some interesting messages it conveyed as well. Jamie's character is supposed to be the golden boy and eldest son of the chief. The actor explained how all of that would affect him, saying that, when you're displaced from your home and when everything is left up to a question, it's extreme. He added that especially for an adolescent, it gives you a massive amount of turmoil, and you don't know how to identify. Flatters stated that for many people growing up and trying to formulate their ideas in the world, a lot of their grounding identity is within a community, and that is only if Netiem and the younger guys achieve being with the Metkayina that they will ever feel at home. The actor believes that the film conveyed a very interesting message. Now let's talk about the two's experience filming the movie. Kate Winslet described this film as one of the purest forms of acting she's ever done. Bailey Bliss and Jamie Flatters also talked about what the filming process was like and their experience with underwater capture. Bailey Bass explained how people that are deaf call it deaf gain. Being able to communicate through ASL allows you to be able to communicate from far away, which means you don't have to have eye contact, but you can communicate at different distances. The actress said that she thinks that's very powerful, and it might be part of what Kate was talking about. She explained that when you're underwater, you're forced to communicate without words, and someone's actions speak louder than their words. Figuring out a way to communicate opens the minds, and when you open your mind, you can implement that into your acting, therefore opening your range of acting. Jamie Flatters agreed, and said that when you lose a sense, another sense gets heightened. The actor thinks it's a good idea for them as a young actor, just knowing that all they need is another actor to lock eyes with for it to become real. Bailey Bass also added that the way James Cameron shoots it is not standard. The camera angles are so intricate, and that's what helps audiences enjoy the movie as well. Lastly, Avatar 2 isn't James Cameron's biggest risk. Avatar 5 is. The plans for Avatar 5 by James Cameron make it a much bigger risk than Avatar The Way of Water. The holiday season release of Avatar 2 will introduce the world to Pandora's new aquatic side. Avatar first showed the planet's breathtaking landscape and its indigenous people, the Navi. 13 years ago, the box office potential of Avatar 2 has been questioned in light of its record-breaking budget. To be sure, while Avatar 2 must perform exceptionally well commercially in order to succeed, Cameron's grandiose plans for the Avatar franchise place Avatar 5 at the pinnacle of the franchise's challenges. Cameron has heavily promoted visual effects technology, including underwater motion capture suits as a major selling point for Avatar 2, indicating his intention to outperform the first Avatar's incredible effects. Cameron clearly intends for the Avatar sequels to outdo each other, but with Cameron incorporating new technology to make each Avatar film more beautiful than the last, there may come a point where that's no longer possible. That ceiling could very well be the in-production Avatar 4, which would have an impact on Cameron's goals for Avatar 5. That's a wrap for this movie. Do you think James Cameron will manage to make the next Avatar movies even better? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!